Take your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 12. We're going to be reading two very familiar verses. I remember years after I had left Rock Creek, I had the privilege of seeing Barry and Martha McKinnon. And she said, Brother Absher, there's one passage I'll never forget. Said, you drilled it into our heads as young people. You drilled it into our heads as we came into young adulthood. And I said, I bet I can tell you what it is before you tell me. She said, what? I said, Romans 12, 1 and 2. She said, that's it. (laughs) One of the most important portions of Scripture to challenge the believer to what's necessary to enjoy abundant living here on this earth and to be effective witnesses for the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul simply says this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, 
that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The first verse says that we would present our bodies a living sacrifice. I think sometimes we forget the implication of that. And I want us to look deeply that we may understand what it means to be a living sacrifice to God. Shall we pray together? Father, we're so thankful for all that you've done for us. No wonder the Apostle Paul addressed and challenged the church at Rome with, I beseech you by the mercies of God. Every one of us here can stand and give testimony to your mercy, to your grace, to your love, to your forgiveness that's been extended to us. And Paul said, if we've been such glad recipients from the good hand of God, then there should be a natural response from us to our Heavenly Father. Help us today, O God, as the Rock Creek Church of God, that we may more fully understand what it means to live our lives as living sacrifices unto you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Oft times when one mentions the subject of sacrifice, people generally turn that tune that person out or begin to think about other things. No one wants to think in terms of sacrifice. You say, why, Brother Absher? It's because most people think of a sacrifice in terms of suffering or giving up something good in our lives. Now, this is not always the case. Sacrifice may involve suffering, and it may cause us to rearrange some priorities in our life, but please understand it's always, and I underscore that, for a better life for you and for me. It's always, when God calls for sacrifice, it's always for a better life for you and for me. However, Satan will always play up the suffering in what you and I may have to give up. You say, I wonder why he does that. Why does he make us think of suffering when we consider the word sacrifice? Why does he play up the things we're going to have to give up in service to the master? Well, the reason is Satan wants to keep the church on the fringe of the abundant life that God has planned for them. As long as you and I never sacrifice in our service to the Master, we'll never know the joy of the Lord in the measure God wants us to know. As long as we never sacrifice, we will never understand the abundant living that God has planned for us in His kingdom labors. There is joy in the Lord. There's peace that passeth understanding. There are things the world can never give you that come only through becoming a living sacrifice unto God. You see, Satan doesn't want any one of us to get deep in spiritual things. He doesn't care how shallow we stay in the water of spirituality. He doesn't care how much we come to church. He doesn't care how much we name the name of Jesus in terms of we believe in Him, we believe in God. That doesn't concern Satan. As long as we stay on the milk of the Word and we never journey out into the deep, we never experience sacrifice in our life, we never know what it means to give up the milk of the Word and begin to eat the strong meat and put on the whole armor of God and call for the fullness of the Holy Spirit in our life. Satan doesn't care 
until we begin to count the cost and pay the price. My friends, life will never be abundant for you or for me until we learn to sacrifice in our relationship with God and one another. It may not always be convenient. It may not always be the way of ease. But it will always be the abundant life. And the life filled with joy and the peace of God. If we cultivate uh, cultivate sacrifice in our personal relationship with God. In our text, Paul is simply affirming on a spiritual level that which is true in every area of life. Success is always built on sacrifice. My friends, to become an athlete, it's certainly a glorified ambition in our society today. I see young people when football is on and title games are being played, they're out in the yard, they're playing football. I see boys (laughs) bouncing the basketball when Tournaments are on, and when the NBA is having their playoffs, they're out there, buddy, and they're showing their stuff and playing basketball. I used to be one of them. But the way you achieve excellence in these areas is through sacrifice. It doesn't just happen. There are weights to be lifted. There are sprints to be run, push-ups to be done, pull-ups to be done, you name it. There's a lot of sacrifice that goes in to making a superstar. And someone's good at what they do. It's the same for musicians. I'd love to be able to sit down and play like these people do or like she played the guitar, but I didn't like it enough to sacrifice. Andrew, our grandson, with guitar as his major, had to practice a minimum of two and up to four hours a day. A minimum of two and up to four hours a day. Now think about that. That's a sacrifice. When I told him, I said, boy, son, you're getting good at that guitar. He said, Papa, I ought to be. I play on it all the time. (laughs) And by the way, pray for Andrew. He and some of his college students fly out this evening and they're going to Nepal, India. They will be there one month on missionary assignment. They started to cancel the trip twice in the last two weeks because of the social unrest over there. The officials of the school have made the decision for them to go. Elizabeth is a basket case. (laughs) So pray for him as he goes and pray for him as he comes back. It's a 24-hour flight. That's just the flying time. It takes a lot longer than that to get there, but he's going to be in the air 24 hours going to Nepal, India. A student, if they're to make grades, must study. It takes discipline. We have to be willing to crack the book. We can't be lazy. We have to be studious and industrious about our studies. A successful home and family life. I got tickled at Marie yesterday. I was telling her how much I loved her, and she said how much she loved me. I said, hadn't this been a great venture? She said, most of it has. (laughs) She said, we had some rocky times. I said, I've tried to push those out of remembrance. (laughs) But you see, a successful home life has to be worked at. It's not all roses and flowers, and sometimes you get a Wayne Absher thrown into the mix. And she's had to put up with me now almost 47 years, so there's some sacrifice in that. I'm glad Jack wasn't here. He'd holler amen. I know he would. For us to have a wonderful family life, husbands and wives have to work together. They have to work things out. It's not always going to be agreeable. There are going to be disagreements. 
I got tickled at Brother Shambly one day. He told me, he said, you know, Brother Abs, your mom and I have been married 50 whatever it was years. He said, we've never had an argument. I looked at him square in the eye. I said, don't believe it one moment. <laughs> and I did. <laughs> he looked at me. <laughs> You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have to work at building your home. So it is in the spiritual realm. If we're to become true servants of God, we must dedicate our total being to God. Now we can go another path if we want to, but if we're going to be servants of the living God, if He's going to use us in this world, we have to dedicate our total being to God. I want to ask you a question. The songwriter asked it. Is our all on the altar of sacrifice laid and our hearts does the Spirit control? Is our all on the altar of sacrifice light? And our hearts does the Spirit control? And then we must consider His will as being the highest possible goal for our lives. We all may have ambitions. I wanted to be a medical doctor as I grew up. I wanted to be a pediatrician. I wanted to work with children. I loved children. And I wanted to help them stay well physically. Everything I studied for through my sophomore year of high school was aimed toward that preparation. But in my junior year, God spoke to me. And He told me He wanted me to preach the gospel. And I said to him, my dad, someplace in this building, I've got to be sure, God, if he comes and stands by me during this invitation, I will preach the Bible the rest of my life. And daddy came and stood by me. It's a long story. And I've been preaching since age 16. And I don't regret it a bit. <laughs> have there been trials and tribulations? Of course there have. Is there joy that the world cannot give? Of course there is. There's a victory in Christ that's known only as we submit to His highest calling upon our lives. What does God, young people, and those of you who've been promoted, what does God want you to do with your lives this morning? Have you considered what God wants you to do? Paul refers to this quality of life as a living sacrifice. What does he mean by that? What it, does it mean to be a living sacrifice for God? Well, first of all, it needs to be noted that a living sacrifice is a sacrifice that's alive. In the Old Testament, we read of animals that were offered as burnt sacrifice. These sacrifices involve death. The animals were indeed victims as they were put to death in sacrifice. As a Christian, I'm afraid sometimes this Old Testament concept of sacrifice is carried over into our church today. Christians talk about what they had to give up to serve the Lord. We testify of how rough the road is and how difficult it is to be a child of God. Many believers in the church for years never smile. You never see the joy of the Lord. You never see a hand lifted in praise. You never hear shouts of Hosanna. Is it any wonder that the church does not influence young people and children in the manner that sometimes we could because we don't let them know what a joy it is to serve Jesus. I told our prayer group this morning at 8 o'clock, I'll tell you what, it's a joy to serve Jesus Christ. It's wonderful. 
Is there sacrifice? Of course there is, but it's through sacrifice that this kind of deep-seated joy and praise and thanksgiving comes. My friends, our text is not challenging us to die for our faith. Brother Abner is not asking you to be a martyr. You may be called upon someday to, do, to be that. That's not what I'm challenging you to this morning. I'm inviting you to live an exciting life for God. I'm inviting you to find out why we were created for in the very beginning. I'm inviting you to discover the fullness of life that God planned for us, every one of us. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live, I live by the faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul knew what it meant to be a living sacrifice. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Oh, if the church could only understand this aspect of sacrifice and all the things that are attending that kind of lifestyle. A living sacrifice is also to be a holy sacrifice. And by holy, I mean positively to be dedicated to God, surrendering everything we are or have to Him. I mean serving Him wholeheartedly, not half-heartedly, not occasionally, but wholeheartedly. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now negatively, holiness means to be separated from sin and the world. Verse 2, be not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. If we're going to be a living sacrifice, we have to break with sin. The Bible says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing. The Bible says to repent of all sin and turn to God. The grace of God is not a license for a life of sinfulness. So God asks us, as we consider being a living sacrifice, to be separated from sin and to be dedicated to Him. I want to ask you a question. Is this too much for God to ask when we consider what sin does for us? God says, my children, repent of sin, turn from it. Don't look back. Don't go back into a lifestyle of sin. Is that too much? When the Bible tells us that the way of the transgressor is hard. When the Bible tells us that sin, when it's finished, bringeth forth death. Not just physical death, but the second death described in Revelation 20. Eternal separation from God. Is it too much to ask? that we be dedicated to Him when we consider what God has done for each one of us. When we were in a hopeless state, a helpless state, when we were in the quagmire, the pit of sin, without hope, without Christ, without God in this world, and the Spirit came and quickened us that we could understand that we were sinners, and ask God to forgive us. And God did. The Bible said He commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinning, Jesus, praise God, died for us. A living sacrifice is to be a complete sacrifice. It calls for a whole lot more than Sunday morning religion.
We haven't done our duty to God just coming through the doors on Sunday morning. I'm thankful for those that are still doing that because it's getting less and less across America. Churches are closing at a rampant speed. Why? Because of the day, decay of faith and morality in our society. But my friends, a living sacrifice in its completeness is more than Sunday morning religion. It calls us to recognize that we're responsible for God in every area of our life, every moment of the day. We are a witness for Him. In the grocery store, as we're trying to get a parking place and someone cuts in front of us. In the home when things are difficult. On the job when we're treated unfairly. On the baseball, softball, basketball fields and courts. When calls are made we don't agree with. You see this complete sacrifice means we come under the umbrella of the spirit led, spirit filled life. We call every thought into subjection to Jesus Christ. We're concerned about every word we speak and the attitude we, dispe- we disclose. We live for Jesus. And if we fail Him, we immediately ask forgiveness. If we do it in the presence of others, we immediately ask their forgiveness. As Paul says in Romans 8, we put to death the deeds of the body by means of the Holy Spirit. That's living sacrifice. We note that a living sacrifice is a joyful sacrifice. Paul did not appeal to the Roman church by fear as a motive for surrender. He beseeches them by the mercies of God. He's saying... Roman church, look at how much God has loved you. Roman church, look at how much God has been willing to forgive you. Roman church, look at how God, when we turn to Him, strengthens us. Roman church, remember God's intercession for you as you're living the Christian walk. Remember, Roman church, God's protection in every circumstance of life. Roman church, remember God's healing. Amen. When I start remembering those things, I get on shouting. Great. <laughs> I'm so glad to be his child. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Amen. It's worth it, young people. You'll never regret it to be a living sacrifice for Him. This type of life, being a living sacrifice, is satisfying. It satisfies God. There's nothing that pleases our Heavenly Father more. In fact, Paul says in verse 1 that this is acceptable unto Him. It pleases God when after He has forgiven us and saved us, after He has protected us and interceded for us, after He has healed us and strengthened us, that we want to give Him everything. And by the way, it will satisfy you. In my almost 50 years of ministry, I've seen so many people in the church try to serve God without ever being a living sacrifice. You know what happened? They were dissatisfied. Dissatisfied with the preacher. Dissatisfied with the church service. Dissatisfied with the Sunday school teacher. Dissatisfied with the change of carpet. Dissatisfied with the kind of pews where you're dissatisfied. And I can go on and on. My friends, when your life is a living sacrifice, you know the joy of Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean we won't have different opinions by these things, but I'll tell you what it will mean when our opinion's not accepted, 
we're going to be agreeable. <laughs> we're going to walk in unity. We're going to love each other. We're going to pray for each other. Finally, and this is very important, a living sacrifice is a voluntary sacrifice. Our text is no demand for draftees. If you're expecting God to knock you down for you to become a living sacrifice, you may be waiting too long because God simply invites us to be volunteers to the greatest life that can be lived on this earth. He simply says, come and follow me. Take up your cross, deny yourself. And find the abundant life. The life that will count for all eternity. Paul be beseeches the Roman church. He doesn't threaten them. God will never force us to serve Him. He's waiting for you and for me to gladly respond to Him. Because of His mercy, His grace, His forgiveness, His love, His protection, His interceding, and the list goes on and on. God's awaiting that people that's grateful and want to serve Him gladly. In closing this morning, what will our response be? God loves us so much, He's given His Son, Jesus Christ, for us. The only thing we have to give up to receive Him is that which will ruin us eternally if we don't, and that's sin. Then He offers us the most abundant life in serving Him and our fellow man. I beseech you to dedicate everything to serve the Lord more faithfully. Could there be areas in your life or my life that need to be surrendered to God? I want to tell you something, my friend. Nothing is more worthy a living sacrifice than our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's stand together as we look to Him in prayer, shall we? Father, how we thank You this morning for the Rock Creek Church of God. We thank You for every family, every individual, every baby, child, and young person. It's a privilege to be their pastor. But God, we pray that every one of us will try to examine what it means to be a living sacrifice for God. Challenge our young people at this stage in their life. Help them, oh God, to weigh heavily what God wants them to do. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.